Hello, everyone. So today I'm going to present my most recent project called Router 7. You'll need to know some background. So I live in Switzerland. And in Switzerland, we have an internet service provider called Fiber 7. And they're awesome. They give you a 1 gigabit symmetrical unlimited pipe into your living room. They provide native IPv4 and IPv6 connectivity. They're advocating net neutrality. They have good peerings, good caches. Everything's great. They have a free choice of your router. And they even sell you the Tourist Omnia in their own shop. The Tourist Omnia, if you don't know, is an open hardware, open source software router from the Czech Internet Registry. So this is how they present it in their shop. They even say, this is the ultimate nerd router. So I decided to go with them a couple of years ago, and I even bought the Tourist Omnia, and life was great. So why did I start a project? Well, back in May 2018, uh, the Tourist Omnia, which does automatic updates, updated overnight, and they pulled in a new version of the DHCPv6 client, which broke my IPv6 connectivity. Now, of course, I looked into this. I reached out to the ISP. I reached out to the author of the DHCPv6 client. And it turns out that uh, Fiber 7 wouldn't want to debug this because they're in the middle of a DHCP revamp. So they're busy rolling out a new platform, et cetera. And the author of the DHCPv6 client doesn't want to make the client more robust. So I have this reputation, which is that if there's anything in my home which annoys me, I'm going to rewrite it in Go. So uh, I had previously worked on uh, the Go Crazy project, which is a pure Go user land for Raspberry Pi 3 appliances. So what does that mean? There's only four moving parts in a Go Crazy project. You have the Linux kernel, you have the Raspberry Pi firmware, you have a minimal init program, and then whatever program that you decide to write in Go, you can install along with these three other parts. I have an example invocation down here on the slide where if you plug an SD card into your computer and you would run Go Crazy Packer, uh, overriding the dev SDB device with, for example, the HM Go application, which is my homematic re-implementation in Go, then you would get like an SD card that you can plug into the Raspberry Pi and it will boot up like straight into your Go program. So I decided to use this and build an internet router. And what do you actually need for an internet router? Well, on the left-hand side, you have the internet. In order to talk to the internet, you'll need IP addresses. In order to obtain these IP addresses, you use the DHCP protocol, both in version 4 and in version 6. Then I introduced another component, which I called a netconfigd. What this component does is it takes all of these magic IP addresses and it configures them on the interfaces. All right, so at this point, your router is on the internet. But that's not what you're going for, right? It's called a router, so it should forward these packages. OK, so then we also need a DHCP4 daemon to hand out IP addresses to like phones, computers, uh, Chromecast, et cetera, on your local area network. And for IPv6, we use the router advertisement daemon. That's not all. You'll also need a DNS forwarder, which uh, will just take queries for names such as google.com and turn it into IP addresses. And it will also resolve the DHCP uh, host names. So that's why there's an additional arrow in there. But then you're pretty much good to go. So what hardware am I running this on? It's not a Raspberry Pi, because the Raspberry Pi cannot do like a gigabit Ethernet forwarding. And if I have a gigabit pipe, I'm going to use it. So I'm using the PC Engine's APU 2C4, which is an awesome embedded device. I can only recommend it. It's a 1 gigahertz, 4-core AMD64 platform. It comes with 4 gigabytes of RAM by default, uh, 16 gigs of SSD space, 3 Ethernet ports. So it's like perfect for building a router. It is open hardware as well. Uh, you can see that the little thing lying on top of the machine is a core boot SPI chip. So for like 3 bucks, they will sell you an SPI chip you can use to develop the core boot that is being used on the device. So that's like awesome. You cannot ever brick it. Um, you can also see that I have this little device connected with the wires going into the case. That's the rebooter, uh, which is like a little teensy microcontroller which will programmatically reboot this machine if I decide to update it or recover it. Speaking of updating or recovering, the device supports Pixie Boot by default. So the way I'm setting it, as, it up is the same way that I'm recovering it, meaning that uh, you don't need to like install anything physically on the device. You just let it net boot into like a little Go program, which serves at the DHCP list, serves at the image, and then installs it to the local disk. The procedure is exactly the same for installation and recovery, so that you can always be sure that your recovery procedure works, because otherwise you wouldn't have been able to install it. All right, so while I'm implementing my own router, uh, I would be amiss to not implement a couple of cool features that I had been uh, going around in my head for a long time. The first one of which is the router has been architected in such a way that it maximizes internet connectivity. Whereas other routers do weird things like adhering to the RFC and giving back their leases when they expire, I'm not doing that, right? So I'm just keeping DHCP leases, even if they're expired, 
because really, like, what's the worst thing that can happen here, right? I have a direct link to my ISP, and if they decide that I shouldn't have a lease anymore, they'll just not forward my packets. But if their DHCP server is down for a couple minutes, I don't want my internet connection to go down just because it's very strictly adhering to the RFC. Then also I have uh, built the system in such a way that all of my test cases actually use real Fiber 7 packet captures. So whenever I'm doing a change to my software, I can be sure that it doesn't break the current setup. Then there's more. Uh, I want to have safe and quick updates because the updates are the feature which drew me to the Tourist Omnia in the first place. So I want to make sure that I will still have a good way to update all of this. To this extent, I've written the diagnostics daemon, which knows about the connectivity state. So it will do things like ping Google via IPv4 and IPv6, establish TCP connections, etc. You can use it both to debug your internet connection if it fails, but you can also use it to programmatically access the state of your internet connection. So I have an updater tool which I can run every day, and it checks am I online, and if so, it updates with a new build of the firmware. And then afterwards, it checks again. And if it's not online, it'll just recover using the procedure I outlined before. Thanks to the Linux's KXEC feature, an update translates in merely 13 seconds of end-to-end -end internet connectivity loss. So you wouldn't really notice that you're doing an update, even if you were like using Twitter in, in the meantime. Only if you're doing like a video call, you will have an interruption. Furthermore, um, I'm paying attention to easy debugging, so all of the configuration-related packets are stored in a ring buffer, which you can live stream into Wireshark, which is just great. And the architecture which I presented makes state visible and modifiable. So there is just a couple of text files which you can introspect and change if need be. In summary, there's lots of good Go packages out there, and it was a lot of fun to pluck them together like this. The project is published as like a tech demo, but I've been using it for the last two months without any issues. If you want to learn more, you can find it on GitHub. Thank you so much.